we turn our attention now to what some people call the granddaddy of them all among sexually transmitted infections, and that is syphilis. Syphilis is a chronic, multi-stage sexually transmitted infection caused by a spirochete known as treponema pallidum. And I think you can see from the attached picture that this microorganism is spiral in shape. Syphilis has not gone away. Indeed, there are 11 million new cases globally every year. The highest incidence in the United States is among men who have sex with men, especially among poor minority communities in the southern United States. In Europe, the rates are between 4.4 and 10.4 per 100,000 population, with especially increased rates in Eastern Europe and Russia. The epidemiology of syphilis has been greatly influenced by the HIV pandemic. There are very high rates of HIV infection among people who are diagnosed with syphilis. Syphilis affects a million and a half pregnant women each year. And about 50% of those women are gonna have some untoward outcome from infection in the form of miscarriage, stillbirth, neonatal death, a very low weight birth weight infant or an infant born with congenital syphilis. Let's talk something about this organism. The organism is known as Treponema pallidum subspecies pallidum and it's a spirochete and note how thin this organism is. It's 0.2 microns in diameter. A typical bacterium is going to be at least one micron in diameter and usually several microns wide. Because it's so thin, you cannot visualize this, visualize this organism by conventional microscopy. It's so thin. It's transmitted by sexual contact and it's got these flagella inside of the periplasmic space of the organism that extend from these little column motors, they're really biomotors, at each pole that overlap in the middle. And it causes the organism to move by wiggling. This is an undulating movement, and it goes through fluids, tissue, and because it's so thin, it goes between cells. So as I mentioned, it is spread by person-to-person -person transmission, usually by intimate contact, either genital-genital contact or orogenital contact. And this organism can directly penetrate the mucous membranes by little minute breaks or abrasions in the skin or the mucosa. Once it does that, it can disseminate through the lymphatics, gets into the bloodstream, and circulates everywhere. Once it gets into the bloodstream, these treponemes can bind to the vascular endothelium. They cause, in a sense, a vasculitis. And that can happen in their target organs and involve the parenchyma of those organs. And these thin spirochetes can penetrate through tight junctions separating endothelial cells. Treponema pallidum has an outer membrane which helps protect it from recognition by our immune system. However, ultimately is going to be phagocytosed by dendritic cells, and then these cells will present the treponema antigens to B cells and T cells.